Okay, so lots of stuff has happened has this ever? week uh, while you've been since laid up. Have, since we haven't spoke. I want to ask you first of all, and I know we've, we've talked a lot about Hardwick, Damien Hardwick and you know, all the stuff there. That, but did that I, – I remember watching your little show and we just looked up the date. It was May 1st. Yes. And you actually flagged the idea – not that Damien Hardwick oh, was no going one, to split. No one saw him coming. But and he was going to resign. But you, about the decision that maybe he needed to make. Yeah. And you talked about Clarko staying on at Hawthorne and, you know, maybe when is the right time to leave a club, even though you've been a successful coach there. That's right. Um, at, at the time, he said no finals won after their last flag the, between the two coaches. So they coached their last premiership and then hadn't won a final after it. They missed finals altogether after the last flag. Two years after the last flag, Hawthorne were five and twelve. A year after uh, the last final, Richmond at that stage were one win, seven losses. So it was sort of pointing that way, and mm. I was shocked and stunned like everyone when when it was announced. But I think it's absolutely magnificent the way he did it. I absolutely endorse the whole way that it all unfolded. Some people were saying though, um, you know, is it was he selfish for the way that he did it, like to walk out on them now? No. Nah. I, well, I don't. I mean, think, I don't think that. But no, no. what do you think? No, I can understand why some people would be feeling that. But the, you're, you then look back at what he's delivered and what he's been able to achieve. And and at that time when we were discussing that, I was talking about how clubs and coaches and coaches and clubs mm. are too embedded, like they're too wedded to each other. And then when you look in the big picture, then you won't. If we had the capacity to look bigger picture, we wouldn't have all these situations where coaches coach for another year and then halfway through the year they go, oh, no, my time's up. Yeah. So, no, I think it was great. Cut it cut it clean and I would like to have seen him coach on the weekend for the Richmond fans. Yeah. But I get, you know, it sort of says a lot about Dimmer. You know, but what, the, the reasons he was in the game was to for success for his club, not for pats on the back necessarily for himself. So he's off and gone. I certainly didn't think that he did it for this reason, but I know how hard it is. I've spoken to Sheeds and over the years, you know, when you're coaching somebody for a long, long time, at some point you've got to have that terrible, uncomfortable conversation. You know what they've given f- to you as a coach, mm. to their club. They've been part of a successful team, but you've got to then have that conversation about ending his career. And there's a couple of, Richmond players that have been great, great players for the club who are coming towards the end of their career. Yeah. You know, Cochin and also Revolt and, uh, you know, Dylan Grimes, you know, like over there. Do, do you think that factored in anywhere in his thinking, David no, Hardwick? Not, not whatsoever. Because Co- Revolt and Cochin are done. So that there's, he's no decision to make there. He, he doesn't have to tap Jack Revolt or Trent Cochin on the shoulder. They're, they're done. Dylan Grimes is committed. But do you, hang on. Do you think they're done, though? Yeah. Do they think they're done? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, do you good. think that they've already had that conversation and they know that at the end of this year they're going? As much I don't know anything about anything, but I would say 99% certain that they're not playing next year. In fact, I'll go 100. There. Okay. Because, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're done. So he may have already had that conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they have. I think if you put the lasso of truth around them, they know exactly where they're at. So um, the, the one thing, you know, and this is where the Clarkson comparison is real, is that Clarkson stayed because he had this sense of, yeah, you know, commitment by Mira and Mitchell mm. and the others that he's recruited, and in, in probably in the end stayed too long. I think by his own admission said no, it was not misplaced, but the sense of loyalty probably did more harm than good. Damien might have looked at Trando and Hopper and said, "Well, I've got you here on the premise that we're going to you know, build, and I'll mm. be the coach." But no, nah, he did the right thing. He's done the right thing by himself. Done the right thing by the coach, as the club, the players, and the club. Club. They now get on with the process of trying to replace him. Clear, and, clear air. And to to that point. Um, were you bemused by how many people in the media immediately thought about Hinckley being the replacement for Damien Hardwick at Richmond and the best candidate? No, no, because this is where your mind goes to. And what I am interested, having just sat back for you know four or five days since it happened, and I haven't had to be anywhere so you can watch and read, is that it? and this is us, this is the media, this is what we mm. do, it fuels all sorts of different scenarios mm. and, and in the process it elevates coaches from where they're at to where they might be, it pushes other coaches away. Mm. It's incredible. To, I think Ken Hinckley's done a great job. He's Norm Smith right now, Ken Hinckley. It's mm. as if Ken Hinckley's coached the last six premierships. Mm. That's that's the, the, the buzz around Kenny now because he's got his club going really well, which is what he's paid to do. I mean, that's the job for him. But now there's this vacancy, so oh, and I'm sitting there going, Kenny, I mean, there's a bloke called Craig McRae 
I mean, when you're going to look for a new coach, mm. so they're going, oh, it's Hinkley or it's this, it's that. It was a bloke called Craig McRae who's walked in. Surely that when you're looking, and, and there's no one size fits all to replace mm. a coach, right? But when you're looking at recent history, he, he had no previous history. He walked in and he turned a footy club on its head where it was 17th and is now on this sort of march to the grand final and maybe a premiership. How big is the job then, the next coach who takes over at Richmond? And we talked about it and, you know, during the week, you know, the, the pillars of your football club, you know, Peggy's gone, uh, maybe Brendan Gale will go, your coach is gone, your, your, your great captain may be gone at the end of the year. Along with him, Revolt, who's been an unbelievable player, Dusty Martin, we don't know where he might be at the end of the year. How good is this job at Richmond then for a, a prospective coach? Well, the job's great because the club's great. This is a great football club of the AFL, Richmond, and they're in the heartland. They're in the heartland of the sporting precinct. They've got, mm. you know, they've got their facilities sorted. You know, so that's they've got a supporter base, the envy of most. So the job in that sense is enormous. I, th- I don't the, – the, it's – there's, the talent at yeah, your disposal? Yeah, I think there's work to be done there. I don't share some that suggest that they are going to be back contending for a premiership really mm. quickly. I think they've got a bit of work to do on the rebuild. I think in this game, we underestimate you know when teams are successful, and we see that even with Hawthorne. You know, like the backbone of their team, you know, Hodge, Lewis, Mitchell, Roughhead. Mm. We and then yeah, you know, all the other guys are you know they've had some super players around that as well, Buddy as well, but. I think we sometimes overlook that they actually had elite, elite talent. Like they had, you know, in some cases, once in a generation type players that they yeah. were that formed the backbone. I think Richmond have had that of as course. well. Of and so. you don't, you know, we know you don't replace players like that at that really pointy end of talent. No. You don't replace them overnight. They don't just turn up every year in the draft. I know you go to the draft and you get the best players available. But just because you get a number one draft pick, it doesn't necessarily mean that that number one draft pick is going to be comparable to the number one draft pick of you know five years ago. And they're not getting a number one draft pick. They haven't even and got, they won't. They haven't no. even got a first round pick. No, so this year, yeah, so. so that makes their job even harder. Yeah, and they would know that. I mean, that, that, that's why you win three premierships in four years. Yeah, when everything sort of comes together beautifully in the manner that it has. But now they've got to go back and and sort that out. And I think that's great. I don't. I think they're going to be middle of the table. And so people then go, oh, well, you know, Collingwood came from 17th. Yeah, that, that's true. So a coach can come in and, mm. and change things quickly. But when you look at what's happened at Collingwood now, they have got some of that generational talent running around. Um, you know, Scott Penelope's not Trent Cotchin. Scott, mm. Scott Penelope's still playing at the level, whereas Koch has, has gone, you know, his magnificent career is coming to an end. The stresses and the anxieties that are associated with coaching are there for every coach. It doesn't matter whether you're on the bottom of the ladder, you're on the top of the ladder, or wherever you might be. I mm-hmm. mean, you feel defeats day in, day out as a coach. Should Stuart Jew be feeling less secure about his job today than what he was before Damien Howick announced that he was stepping aside? Should he be feeling it? I don't know whether he should be because I'm sure uh, Mark Evans and everyone else is telling him exactly, you know, what he needs to hear, but the reality is he would be. No, I think he would be feeling less secure um, because, yeah, you've still got a three-time premiership coach who's in the market. He's out on the market now and he's got he's coaching a team that has been, you know, promising a lot and delivering not much. Um, so, of course, and that's unfair and it's sad, and, but this is the narrative. It goes over to Adam Simpson. Over in, I've, I've been thinking a lot about Adam Simpson mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. In what way? I don't think what, – what else – Hey, I, just on that point, just on that point, we, we heard um, uh, Ryan Daniels over in uh, WA who reports for Channel 7 was saying that uh, West Coast Eagles are giving him three months uh, leave at the end of the year if he wants to take it mm. and just uh, go away and freshen up. He might take long term. He might leave altogether. It, it, that's what he should do. I mean, that, that's the, I think that's almost – Leave altogether? I think that's the cleanest, clearest – Thing for him to do for the whole West Coast situation. That's when just sitting back and watching it. Why? Because he he should leave. Well, in my opinion, he, he just should leave because this is he going to bury himself now down back into that footy club and you know it's going to take five years for them to reemerge, right? Is he going to be there at the end of five years, Adam Simpson? I don't think so. 
I don't, I, he, just, he just should go to them, look, I've loved being here. I've done my best. I've delivered a premiership. You've been great mm. for me. And they should say, yep, you're damn straight. You've been great for us. And we love the relationship. But now I think it's time. It, it, that, that, to me, is the, that's the mm. easiest of all the decisions to be made in the coaching landscape. It appears they don't want to make that decision. I don't either. blame Adam Simpson. As, I reckon you know, we were critical of them you know, early about the way they played and you know, modern footy and they're a bit slow to react. But what, have a look at – it doesn't matter. You can mm. put Damien Hardwick, Alistair Clarkson and – but he bring Ron Brassi back and throw him over there right now. Right now you could, yeah. yeah. But do you think there's That's an element? That's not going to change, Tim. Do, do, do you think there's an element in all this too where they actually need a break from a coach because you've had a coach there who's been there for a, a long period of time, um, won a premiership, probably, and you forge this relationship with players. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of emotion that's attached within all that. We talked yeah. about that with Cochin and Hardwick before. You know, that, that same thing. Do you feel that, and within doing that, Maybe you you treat them kinder than what maybe. you should because of that emotional yeah, attachment. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and a different lens comes in. But I, I just think for him and for the club, that is the best result is at the end of the year just shake hands and, and move on because mm. they've got they got an enormous way to go, Yeah, enormous way to rebuild and go. They, they can do that with another coach and not lose too much ground. Can you see a world then in which – Adam Simpson could be the coach of Richmond next year. Um, yeah, possibly. I, don't, I haven't even looked that far ahead. I know I, we're speculating yeah. now, but if you're saying that he goes, then mm. I would think that Adam Simpson at his age, given his CV, ends up somewhere else. Yeah, I know. Sure. I'm, and this is not a crack at him per se saying he's a hopeless coach, therefore he should leave. I just think that is the best thing for both club and coach. But then I'm, I'm saying, well, yeah, he would, Sure. Of course, he'd be looked at from the Richmond powers that be, but they would be looking at the McRae example. You'd mm. have to. Mm. and But then you'd also look at this and you'd look at that. And well, they've got Minnie McWalter who's going to coach yeah, for I the think... rest of the year. And I just read what Barmy had to say about him. He's, he said uh, he's very, very similar to McRae. Yeah. Understated, humble, knows his footy really bright, good people manager, gets on with people really well, doesn't take himself too seriously. So, just remember... Barmy's been around a long time. When Barmy talks about <laughs> people – and his belief in you know what can you know what characteristics they have that are going to suit a successful coach. We should listen to him. Talk. You couldn't have, you get think about who's saying those words and the success that he's had in identifying people to take clubs to where they need to go. That means that McWalter needs to be considered.